Apple's 3 nanometer M2 Pro Max and Ultra Max. Was I wrong? This video is sponsored by Aura. I've said forever that I think Apple intends to update their Apple Silicon Max across the board with new chips annually. If Apple were to hit this right away, that would mean seeing M2 Pro and Max in October in the updated MacBook Pros, but that would also likely mean they'd be made on TSMC's 5 nanometer Plus node, the same as the M2. But the latest rumors line up with those M2 Pro and Max chips potentially being on the new lower yield 3 nanometer processor, but there is a catch to this. But before we get into that, what would a 3 nanometer mean for Apple if it does happen? Please bear in mind that these rumors do come from Flipper Coin Leakers Digitimes, but they also seem to be corroborated by Shrimp Apple Pro, who, even though their name is hilarious, have been right about things in the past, so this is certainly worth discussing. And also, this is what Vadim thinks is happening, and I made a whole video saying that I think Vadim is wrong over at Max Tech, but he might be right. And if that is the case, please at least help me to get to a million subscribers before Max Tech do. They're on like 990,000, we're on 11,000, so I do need your help. Dropping from five nanometer, the M1 generation, to three nanometer, according to TSMC's own numbers, will give a 25 to 30% lower power draw, along with 10 to 15% performance increases, assuming the SOC design is basically the same and just scaled. So that's basically free improvement you would get. Free as in without redesigns, it's very expensive and very hard to do. But as the chip itself would be 70% more dense in terms of transistors per millimeter, Apple would likely increase the number of transistors as well, just like how M2 is a larger chip than M1 as they're on the same node. You would be able to do the same M2 Pro chip as the M1 Pro, but in a much smaller space, so that means you've actually got room to expand out, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the video. So in addition to these node benefits, you would get generational improvements as well. This would of course mean that the power consumption would increase versus the old scale design, but within like the envelope that the smaller node has provided. I know this is going to be confusing, but basically making it a smaller node means that it uses less power, which means you can give it more power and more stuff and still reduce the amount of power you're using. It's crazy, we're gonna get into numbers. If Apple was to take the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, the M1 Ultra, and just scale them down without doing anything else, apart from... Uh... So if Apple was to take the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and the M1 Ultra, and just scale them down without doing anything else, the M2 Pro, Max, and Ultra then get a single core of around 2018, but if you include the improvements with M2, i.e. the same performance delta from the M1, then you go up to 2251. And, and that's basically the improvement that you get from taking the M2 and throwing it onto a three nanometer process. The multi-core for the Pro and Max, both being the 10 core chips, would improve from 12,327 to 16,933, a massive jump, assuming the same 10 core CPU with eight performance cores, and then the 20 core studio would go up from 23,366 up to 32,097. For context, the fastest AMD Threadripper with 64 cores right now on Geekbench is the 3990X, and that is hitting 25,347. So as mentioned, this is assuming the same 10 core layout for the M2 Pro and Max as the M1 Pro and Max, i.e. Eight performance cores, two efficiency cores. And of course the M1 Ultra is made up of two of the M1 Max chips. Now rumor has it that the M2 Pro and Max could actually have 12 cores inside them, but it isn't clear if those additional two cores will be additional efficiency blizzard cores or performance avalanche cores. This is all a part of what Apple could do with that extra footprint from the die shrink that we were talking about earlier because that die would be 70% more dense. And if you're worried that these numbers wouldn't scale because of the thermals, remember that all of this is consuming 25 to 30% less energy too, so it would be running even cooler than the M1 at the same time. It would be most likely the performance cores that they would add, I would guess, but I don't have that information, so I don't want to calculate kind of what that would be right now got to keep you coming back haven't we so now would be the perfect time to subscribe now i answer all of your questions on the show all of the time as well and all you have to do is use the hashtag i gave answers in the comments section so hit subscribe ring the bell so that you don't miss your answers too but this first one is like the most appropriate question anyone has ever asked 
for a video I was making. Evan Rogers, one of our Patreons, asks, I gave answers, what would the 3 nanometer Z1 slash Extreme SoC look like in terms of Geekbench CPU and GPU scores? Let's assume, let's assume it uses cores similar to the M2 and a hypothetical of 40 CPU cores and 128 GPU cores. Also, how much gains does the process shrink alone bring? So, the CPU part is fairly easy here because the CPU performance tends to scale close to linear it's been around about 90% the performance of uh, just having the two separate chips. So uh, the thermals would also be the limiting factor here normally. And we know that the three nanometer is going to be just a lot cooler. So that shouldn't actually become a factor. The dual M2 Ultras will likely have independent cooling as well. So with 40 cores, we would be looking at around 64,000 on Geekbench uh, potentially, which is around 364 core thread rippers. Of course in the real world the difficulty would be finding tasks that actually need that much multi-threaded performance right now like to actually be able to take advantage of it. Now there's a lot of people that have been asking like why would you need this there is of course the option of running multiple programs you might not have one program that is uh, optimized to use all of those cores but you might be running two or three very taxing programs at the same time and of course you've still got all of your neural engine cores in there as well to play with great fun and that takes a lot of the pressure off of the cpu and the gpu as does the media engines coffee obviously icavedave.com forward slash merge now graphics this is the other side of things um which we haven't really talked about in the previous section again if you want me to deep dive into the metal stuff it's very difficult to compare to other graphics cards but uh, the m1 max metal score is 64708 and the m1 ultra metal score is 94583 so doubling here does not give you that kind of linear increase it gives you 40 percent increase so if we were to double again and go up by another 46 percent that would give us 138,091 points on metal but that is based on the five nanometer m1 cores with three nanometer a15 m2 cores we're looking at 189,692 and the current metal champion is the amd radeon pro w6900x which scores 160 66,946. Now, of course, this is assuming 128 cores, uh, which hasn't increased, of course, but the M2 in general has uh, actually given 25% more GPU cores than M1 at this point, 8 increasing to 10. Uh, 25% of 8 being the two that we're adding on. I, I, I know it's confusing, but I, I'd like to specify that because obviously 10 is actually like 20% more than 8, but 8 plus 25% of itself gives you 10. It, percentages are confusing. But yes, that's where it sits. Um, pretty impressive. I like it. Next up, Randomness R asks, IK answers any news on new Pro XDR displays from Apple? Interestingly, no, nothing on the displays themselves, but today they did file a patent, or like a patent was unearthed by the guys over at Patently Apple, which shows a dual kind of XDR mount. Thing with two feet at the ends and then a big bar across the middle and uh, like sliding mounts that you can kind of vest mount your XDR displays onto. This is an Apple patent. This is kind of the latest that we've heard on it. Um, nothing else on the actual panels though, but I will keep you up to date as soon as there is anything. Next up, Randomness R asks, I gave answers. When do you think Apple will increase the screen size of the Pro Max iPhones? Again, the last increase was the 12 Pro Max to 6.7 inches from 6.5 inches on the 11 Pro Max. Just make it seven inches already. It will be the perfect Max iPhone. I don't think you're going to get seven inches this year, but it looks like 6.9 is actually what they're going to. Not increasing the size of the physical phone, but actually just reducing the bezels down a little bit. And also, of course, where the notch was, that side also going to be thinner. You are going to have uh, the pill and hole or the eye hole in there, which we've mentioned in the past. But yeah, that looks like what we're getting this year. 6.9 inches. You're not getting seven. 6.9 is funnier. Randomness R also asks, IK answers, another complaint I have is when you share TikTok or YouTube links in iMessage, they show up on my watch, but only the TikTok videos play and the YouTube ones don't. I don't know, it's not ideal, but the watch is always on me when I'm walking around. Sometimes I just like to listen to content off YouTube where the video itself is not important for me to be watching. I equally have my AirPods Pro or Max on, uh, but, that, but it sucks that I always have to grab my phone. Why haven't they brought this to the watch? Uh, with that one, you're going to have to ask YouTube because I think that's a big chunk of of YouTube 
problems right there. Google doesn't seem to want people to be able to watch uh, their videos in the background and I guess the watch kind of falls under that category for them I guess that's what I'm going to say on this one because yeah otherwise YouTube premium and things like that maybe they'll give you a, a premium watch app that you're able to use that'd be cool random star IK answers why doesn't Apple allow us to airdrop music straight into the music app if I'm sharing a song with my wife I always have to airdrop it to her Mac then she has to sync her iPhone it's extra steps and a waste of time the same goes for videos they should natively go straight to the music and Apple TV apps since it's content that's already purchased or downloaded uh, yes it is however Apple doesn't know that you've purchased or downloaded this legitimately um, and I believe some of the licensing stuff that goes on with Apple Music basically means that you no know you can't uh, the the big reason I think is the same reason that they used to have is I think it's basically a holdover from when we used to have iPods and you weren't able to sync music from multiple systems to a single iPod you had to like sync it all from the same library if you're putting it into the library then uh, Apple is kind of like okay fine whatever it's on your computer do what you want with it but otherwise people would just be airdropping songs from one another um, that they hadn't necessarily got the rights to and remember when you download or purchase a song you're not purchasing the song you're purchasing a license to listen to that song which doesn't transfer over to other people that you're sending it to uh, I understand why it would make sense for your wife to be able to listen to it but um, just get Apple Music. Um, the subscription is really good. Random Nassar asks, I gave answers. I was listening to Brian Tong's podcast, the latest episode, and even he was wishing for a 17.6 to 18-inch MacBook Pro. Is there any way Apple could make an 18-inch MacBook Pro or Air? Man, I love bigger screens. Cheers. We know you love bigger screens because that's all you ever ask me about normally. Um, I get it that people want this bigger display. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think it's going to happen. The big reason, and I keep coming back to this, is the battery in the MacBook Pro 16-inch is as big as you can physically put on an aircraft. Uh, if you put a bigger display on it, you are going to be using more um, battery life to power that display, so your battery life is going to be shorter. If you don't put a bigger battery on it, then you're going to get the shorter battery life. It's the same reason that I don't think they're ever going to put the Ultra chips into the, uh, the MacBooks. However, what we've just been talking about with three nanometer chips, that is going to give you 25 to 30% better battery life if you've got the same performance. At that point, it does that 100 watt hour give you enough battery life that they would be happy to do this? Maybe. If we get to lower um, power displays, things like OLED, I think, uses less battery life than a mini LED even? Maybe. That would be what needs to come first. You can't just slap an 18-inch um, display into a current MacBook and expect it to have similar battery life, similar performance, when you can't make the battery any bigger. So I think that's the big limiting factor right now. But let me know, is it a trade-off that you would take? A. Hughes asks, IK answers, what is Apple doing with all the leftover non-binned 8-core GPU M1 SoCs that are now no longer offered as an option in either the M1 MacBook Air or the 13.3-inch MacBook Pro education customers? Um, here's my thought. It's probably going into iPad Pros and iPad Airs right now. So the iPad uh, range is basically taking those M1 SoCs. The M2s are now going into the Macs. Uh, that all makes sense to me then you've still got the option of the binned ones in an M1 MacBook Air. You can also still get it, of course, in the Mac Mini. That's the other place that they're probably going just for the moment. This video is sponsored by Aura. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is? For years, the crime rate has been surging and affecting millions of Americans. I'm talking about identity theft, and there's a new victim every 14 seconds. Yet despite this, those who have their identity stolen are often shocked when it happens. Imagine trying to lock into your email account only to see that your password has changed hours ago. Then you start getting notifications of activity from your bank, credit cards, crypto accounts. That's when the feelings of panic, fear, anxiety, paranoia, disbelief, shock, anger, and frustration and guilt set in. That's why I'm excited to partner with Aura, who is sponsoring this video. Aura is an identity theft protection, fraud monitoring, and a VPN, password management software, and antivirus software combined into one easy-to-use app. Aura monitors the dark web for your emails, passwords, and social security numbers, and sends you alerts fast, right to your phone, 
and email. When it comes to fraud, every second matters. Connect your credit cards and bank to be notified of any changes up to four times faster than Aura's competitors. Their VPN allows you to stay anonymous online by keeping your browsing history and personal information safe and encrypted, and their antivirus software that will block malware and viruses before they infect your devices. Sadly for me, Aura is currently only available in the US, but if you check out their free trial, be sure to let me know in the comments how many times your information has been detected on the dark web. Protect you and your family from America's fastest growing crime. Try Aura free for two weeks and see if any of your family's personal information has already been compromised. Start your free trial at aura.com forward slash iCaveDave. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring the show. And that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you want to join our Patreons, which help support me as I'm currently not employed, which is terrifying, um, head over to icavedave.com forward slash Patreon and you can join the beautiful people that get a shout out at the end of every single episode. Um, and let me know what you would like the Patreon perks to be. We've stopped doing the uh, the ad-free versions just at the moment because nobody was watching them. So let me know what you want your perks to be. If you want me to do uh, bonus live streams for Patreons, I'm happy to do that on a weekly basis. Um, and you can just hang out with me. Maybe we could even make it just like a meet chat where you can all just chat backwards and forwards on video. I'm happy to do that. Let me know. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.